room like this full of green and white guys coming down and, and girls at the end of the game, you know, trying to high five. And you know, it's got to be the, probably one of the coolest feelings you have, especially after a win. Yeah, it feels great just to have the type of following we do. And you know, since we've been playing really well these past few games, and the city has just showed us so much love. Everybody in New York, New Jersey, everywhere we go, just so much love and just you know, not that you need any that you need any added incentives to win, but just it makes you feel good to know that the city has your back. So you guys think this is Jets Town now or what? <laughs> I will say it's it's been crazy for me to see, especially in this playoff run. San Diego was the craziest thing that I've ever seen. You go out there, you know, before kickoff, and you look around those first 20, 25 rows, there was more green and white than there was blue. You know, it, it was really crazy to see. I love you guys. It was impressive to see just how many Jets fans. And then when you have an opposing quarterback the the game, trying to get the crowd quieted down. I mean, that says a lot about Jets fans and, you know, how well you guys travel. Thank you. All right, I got a question. You're excited, right? How, how do you prepare yourself for a game? Because I used to play excited in my high school team. How do you prepare for it? You have to kind of prepare for it. You, because the thing uh, with being tight end, you have to be ready to get in there and block and be physical with somebody all the time. But you also have to be real smooth when you're running around to receive it. So you have to be able to turn on that, that crazy switch on and off and uh, get in there mixed with linebackers and sometimes a, a crazy safety like Jim gets down in there. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's kind of tough. You have to look at the same thing as the offensive line does as far as blocking, but the same thing that the receivers do when you run your route. So, so there's definitely a lot of stuff you have to take into consideration and watch it through. You guys this year obviously are a primarily running team. I mean, that's been you know, the bread and butter so far. How has that changed your game? Uh, it's been great for me because it's given me a chance to work on my blocking. And I knew that we were supposed to be, we were going to be a bigger running team this year. So in the whole offseason, I just spent a lot of time working on my, my footwork and you know, my hand placement, all this different stuff to become a better run blocker. And you know, what better time than the season to get that work in? And it's gone really well for us. And now I think with Sanchez coming along really well, being a lot better and more efficient with the pass, that's starting to open things up even more for the run, so I think that's just going to help us that much that much more on Sunday. Um, I guess this is for each AJ and get started. I mean, talk about playing in New York, uh, you know, compared to the other places you played out in Dustin. You only play here, but, you know, the passion of the New York fans, how every single play, every single thing gets scrutinized. In some ways, I'm sure that's a good thing, but, you know, in, in other ways, it's bad. But how do you guys appreciate that? You guys, you love it. Um, well, you, got, you got to have thick skin, <laughs> number one. Um, you know, and you, you can't be uh, uh, too soft, and, you know, it's not for everybody, but but I, I love playing up here. And, and uh, you know, the passion exists. I said earlier, what I don't like is an apathetic fan base, and, uh, you know, you don't have that here in New York. And uh, th there's a high standard, you know, set by, by the Yankees, obviously, that kind of permeates all the other sports. And, uh, you know, I just want to be a part of, of bringing the championship back to the Jet fan base. Yeah. Um, I have a five-minute to get you guys going with him doing his J-E-T-S thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. He's My first year here, you know, and, and I, I was in Buffalo for three years with the Bills, so I got to come here as, as a visitor for three years. And uh, to see him, you know, most places don't have, like, kind of that figure for the fans. So to have a guy like that, you know, it, it's it's fun because, I mean, and I know Rex, is, Rex brought him in one week and gave him a game ball, like, in honor of the fans. You know, so it is kind of a special thing uh, for the New York and for the Jets fan base. So it's kind of fun to have him. I've seen him last year. They were chesting out different people, and nobody could get the fans going the way he does. It was very funny. Yeah, I, I love him also. I thought... I actually thought he was crazy the first time I saw him. I didn't know anything about that year. I thought this guy is like eight feet tall. I come to realize he's on the shoulders of another, another man. But, uh, yeah, he, he's real cool. He's, he's come and he's he spoke to us a few times, and, and we really appreciate the way he gets the fans going. Shuts everybody down. Dustin, just a quick question. That touchdown in San Diego.
No, I didn't. I, that was, <laughs> that, it was actually very well covered. And you know, on that play, we actually have a little rule where you kind of step back, and Sanchez read it perfectly, put it low and outside where I could get the ball where the other guy couldn't. And it's really just a credit to him. It's great for the bottom mark. Right here. Questions for Jay. Um, just want to know, everybody Everybody probably wants to know, why do you wear gloves during the game? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you, you don't ask, uh, you know, your tight ends or <laughs> You know, honestly, uh, number one, I like it for tackling. Uh, I feel like I can grip a little bit better. And then if we hit an onside or we hit a fake, uh, I, want, I want gloves on for that. And, and you don't want to tip it off by, uh, by putting them on. So. Uh, Jay is the only kicker I've ever seen that actually goes out and smacks guys. <laughs> <laughs> Season workouts, we're sitting there competing, you know, racing on 20 yards or whatever it is, and Jay's in there beating everybody. <laughs> I'm like, there's, some, there's something wrong. <laughs> Our kicker is just killing everybody in the sprints. And I may go down and make six tackles, but Jim's the same size as me. He's out there taking on all the running backs and everybody else, so I got a tremendous so you're, you're the whole head 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 head. Rex Ryan. <laughs> 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 excited. Um, anytime you get something like that, I, I think the fans just have such high expectations. Uh, you know, just with Rex coming in this year and then getting it, uh, obviously being in the AFC Championship game and then the new stadium open next year, it'd be, be kind of nice to, to parade those Super Bowl rings out that, that first game. But, uh, Raise that battle. Hey, I'm excited We're going to try to get there. I'm excited to not be kind of like the second class citizen yeah. of the stadium. You know, I play for the Giants, and I know it is Giants Stadium, and then you come over to the Jets, and, uh, you know, I want our own stadium, yeah. and I'm kind of excited yeah. about that. Right here. Jay, what's your biggest fear on the field? My biggest fear? Yeah. Um, you know, you don't really have a lot of fears out there, but I, I would say um, I, don't, I don't ever want to have any regrets. You know, and so when I, when I approach my career, uh, I want to work as hard as I can every day so that whenever I'm done playing, I can look back uh, fondly and not, not regret that I worked harder, that maybe I left something out there or didn't do something that I could have done to, to be as good as I could be. I will say I will be borderline fair and clean. <laughs> Obviously, like you got to be able to see it, and uh, you know, it, it was fun. Like, I kind of started laughing about it right away, and you know, to see how the media and everything it really took off on it, uh, it's kind of fun. But I mean, at the same point, it's like, why not? You know, that's what we're playing for. Why, why just, why go game to game? He hasn't done that all year. You know, he's the first thing in training camp. Right? The first thing when he got the job, he said, "I'm gonna bring the Super Bowl to New York," and, and he's been talking like that for the rest of the year. But don't, like. but don't confuse it. There's a purpose behind what he does. He didn't just do that because it would be uh, a big splash in the media. He wants to instill confidence in our team, and he wanted us to make sure that, that we all knew that he believed that that's where we were going to end up, so much so that I'm going to go through it, I'm going to lay out exactly what our schedule is going to be. And there's a purpose behind what he does. How important? I, was oh, I, was, uh, I mean, I know he had a lot of purpose behind it and all, all that. I just I found it more informative than anything because I was – Myself, I was wondering when the parade was, too. Do you compare that to, like, Namath guaranteeing a win in the 68-69 season? Um, 
I, I definitely think it's a little bit different. You know, we're not going to any certain game. He hasn't guaranteed a victory in any certain game. But just it's the mindset. It's not, yeah, it's not showmanship. You know, that's the difference. You know, yeah. I mean, it, there's a purpose for everything he does, and, and he knows what he's doing. Um, I know uh, Dustin and Jay, you were there last year for, uh, for Mangini and uh, this year for Rex. <coughs> Saturday night before the game, uh, what's the difference in motivation between the two coaches? And, uh, one more thing, do you think Rex's uh, 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 X's X's and O's kind of get lost with his mouth uh, during press conferences? For, there's really no purpose in like looking back. I, I'll just tell you that Rex is, incre and Dustin said it earlier, incredibly motivational. You know, he, he does a great job, and his speeches are impassioned. You know, and, and the fact that you know, he was criticized for, for crying, you know, for getting choked up in, in one of the team meetings is laughable because uh, the, the impact that it has on the players is you know how, how much he cares. And, and I think that that was a moment that, uh, that the players uh, really respected him, you know, so much so that, that he would get choked up. You know, and the night before the games, uh, yeah, he, he, I've never seen a guy more passionate and more fired up uh, than he gets when he gives his speeches. Did it really start with, with going up to Cortland? I mean, was that kind of a big deal for you guys this year? I think it, I, I think it is. Um, just the same thing, like I said, for Rex, it's a mindset. He wants that team secluded to where all you have is each other because you go out to San Diego in the divisional round, that's all you have. So you need to be a close knit group, and, and you need to be able to count on each other, and you know, not just manage each other, not just deal with each other, but you actually have to like each other. You know, there's a lot of I've been on a lot of football teams in this league that just dealt with each other. You know, once once work was over, once practice was over, everyone's gone. You weren't talking to anybody. So I think it is important to have that chemistry, you know, true chemistry, not not fake on the field chemistry, but just true genuine respect for the players you play with. Do you think you'll stay in Cortland or are you going to come back to Hofstra where you can watch him? If we win, I promise you we're going back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go, going back though, uh, the one thing I want to say about Rex and his motivation, the biggest thing for me is, and then there's many different ways to do it, but if, if you look at Rex, what he takes up there, he might have his notes, his note is like one word. Like, he's not a guy who sits down and prepares a speech. He'll think about it and say, what do my guys need to hear? What, what do I really think about this game? And that's where he, so it's all from the heart. So whereas you, you might have a real motivational guy who sits in his office all week thinking, what am I going to tell these guys on Saturday night? It's all from the heart. And that's, I, I think you guys see that just in his news conferences and anything. Like, he speaks from the heart. He tells you exactly what he what he thinks is what he believes. Just just being a fan and everyone else is obviously Jet fans. Um, You're a you Jet know, fan? No. <laughs> really? no. Not at all. How, I mean, obviously you guys all stand behind your coach. You hear the media, you know, ripping him for this, that, and the other. You guys stand behind him every time. How often and like how frequently do you guys find a coach like that that you get, you know, you're dedicated to, you have the heart, the passion, everything, you know, in for your coach? I know, I mean, with Mangini last year, you know, people, so you hear, you know, on the back burner, some people didn't like him, some people did. I haven't heard one negative thing from any of you guys, you know, media, after the game, before, whatever. I mean, you guys are all pretty much, you know, think right behind how often do you guys find a coach like that? I mean, I, I think a lot of times there's a lot of coaches that you want to go out there and you want to play hard for, but never to the extent that, that we want to do for Rex. Yeah. Uh, like I said earlier, he, he gives us everything. He gives us all the credit, and, you know, even though our, we have a great coaching staff, obviously Rex, Rex has been amazing to us. Yeah. And, just the way he motivates us, how highly he speaks of us, and the confidence that he speaks on his team with, about or with us. We just we just want to go out there and just give everything. And like Jay says, and none of us want to have any regrets coming out. Um, clearly, like the inspiration and motivation is something that's huge aside from all the physical aspects of it, especially for some of the kids that are out here. Who were your role models growing up? Your role models to so many of them. So who were yours growing up? Assuming you want to yeah, one of mine was, was Walter Payton. I mean, I, I loved watching Walter Payton. He had such a great work ethic. Uh, I remember watching videos of him training, you know, and he'd say, you got to keep on pushing, pushing for more yards. And uh, I had a picture of him on my wall and that he had signed and said, Jay, life and athletics require a total effort. 
for success. Um, you know, you have those moments, and it's special to be in those shoes now. And, and I think that, you know, as a professional athlete, the greatest advantage you have is, is the platform that playing a sport gives you to, to have an impact, especially in kids' lives. For me, uh, it was Barry Sanders for me. I mean, he obviously was a special, special player, and then just kind of his demeanor and the way he carried himself on and off the field. You know, what, what I saw, at least, as, as a kid, you know, it, it seemed like that's the way you should do it. And uh, so he was, he was my biggest role model in football. Mine was probably uh, our fullback, Tony Richardson, because when I was five years old, I think... <laughs> <laughs> I am so telling him you said that. <laughs> We're gonna take we're gonna take one last question, and two on more. behalf of Steiner Sports, two more. Two more. we're gonna take two more questions. But on behalf of Steiner Sports, we really appreciate everybody coming out, and most importantly, we really are privileged to have the opportunity of three of the Jet really star players coming out and spending time with us this week. And a lot of us, I'm sure, have been to these before, and to really hear, you know, from the players how they feel something very special, especially in a small group like this. So we'll take two more questions, and then we'll do our thing. And I'm sure those guys, you know, want to get some rest and you know meet everyone, and therefore, so we'll take two more questions, and then we'll go from there. You got one, and I'm guessing it's for Keller. Well, what what I think I'm kind of thinking what happens on it is it's just such a relief we're getting the end zone, taking the lead, and I'm just. So so hype about it. I'm just screaming. Now, some, one of them I only think I remember. I think I'm on a blacked out. <laughs> but our uh, receiving coach Henry Eller, because me and Sanchez, we weren't like our chemistry wasn't the greatest in the middle of the season. We weren't hooking up the way that, uh, that we thought we were at that point. So he actually said that he thought I was just screaming in frustration to finally be able to get these balls and start catching them. But uh, I don't know. Just just it's, it's so relieving to be able to you know make the big plays, and finally when it's happening, it's in the postseason, my first ever postseason, and it's just an incredible feeling. Okay, one more. Okay, I have a text question coming in from a Super Jets fan. He says, <laughs> Shut he up. Keller, he plans more blocking assignments to try to offset the Indian bookends. Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to give away our game plan, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I plan on throwing my head in there a couple of times, hopefully with my helmet on in like June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay.